And oh, how he loves us all Oh, how he loves us much. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Happy Fathers to all of our Father's Day. Uh, uh, in the bulletin, I put a little note in there about walk a little plainer, Daddy. I said, as a boy, little boy so frail, I'm following in your footsteps and I don't want to fail. Sometimes your steps are very plain. Sometimes they're hard to see, but walk a little plainer, Daddy, for you're leading me. I know that you once walked this way many years ago and what you did along life's way, I'd really like to know. For sometimes when I'm tempted, I don't know what to do, so walk a little plainer, Daddy, for I'm going to follow you. Someday when I'm all grown up and I and are like you, I want to be, and then I will have a child who will want to follow me. And I would want to lead them, uh, right, and help them so true, so walk a little plainer, Daddy, for we must follow you. Dads, I pray for you today that God would bless you and encourage you today. Uh, I'd ask one of our men, uh, he had written something on Facebook, and I wanted to share it with you. I thought it was just very appropriate. But today, his father had passed away. And he said, today is a little tough because it's been 13 years since my dad's accident. As I think about how he never got to see any of his grandchildren, it can be tough. But when I look into my daughter's brown eyes and I see his, I see it as well. When I hear that certain laugh from, Car from my son and then hear him, da and him hear dad, it's well. When I look at my wife and think of his words on our wedding day, you did good, don't mess this up, it is well. When I see my sister struggle in her personal life and me not know what to do, it can be tough. But to see that his determination in her finally to be happy, it is well. To relive, to relive my mom saying, what are we going to do? The day he died can be tough. To see her live the way he would want her to live, it is well. So today, I choose to see that it is well here on earth. When I go to see him again, it will be awesome in heaven, it is well. You know, folks, sometimes we have to realize that through the difficulties of our lives, it is well. It is well that God takes care of us and ministers to us and loves us. And today, as we think of our fathers, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the 23rd chapter of the book of Joshua. To the 23rd chapter of the book of Joshua. I was sharing with the early service this morning. had a great crowd in the early service, and I was sharing with them. Uh, I told Cole earlier I would probably finish this week. Uh, through chapter 24, but uh, there's been a slight uh, alteration. Uh, I'm going to finish next week, all right? And chapter 23 is where we're going to go today, and so we'll finish up next week before we go to Alaska. Uh, we'll be preaching Sunday, next Sunday morning, and then we'll be leaving to go to Alaska and head out for on our mission trip there. And two will be going to Guatemala, so we're going to ask you to have a special time of prayer for that. But, but as we do today, as we open up the Word of God and we realize how important this is, you know, for a father uh, to come to this understanding uh, that he gathers people around him, you know, some of the most important words that we have in our life are those last words that are, we've had a conversation with our parent that passed away with our dad or our mom or someone that we've loved very dearly. And so these are some of the last words that Joshua would speak. He's an old man. Now he's gathering together. Joshua led Israel for some 30-plus years. had been with him over 70 years. He'd been faithful to the Lord. The Lord had been faithful to, the, to him and, and faithful to the people that he led. Joshua is nearing the very end of his life. He's ready now for someone to take the baton, for someone to take over. So today, I didn't have a torch, but I asked Coach Robinson to get me a baton. This is a baton that a runner runs when they run in a race. Our track team would run, and when they, they would be running, they would run, and in one motion, they would run backwards and hand it off to the next person who would come along. This morning we're finding that God is bringing Joshua as he brought all the people of God together. And he's handing off the baton. He's raising the torch for the new leadership to begin. For God to open up a new opportunity for people to come. Folks, as we go into the 21st century, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our future is not only up there, but it's here now. Isn't that right? Amen. Those boys and girls are our future, but those boys and girls are today. They're the body of Christ today. And what we teach them today will be the things that they teach later on in life. Come on, say amen. amen. Now, if we realize that today, we're going to be handing off the baton. We're going to be sharing with that. And that's what uh, Joshua was going to do to lead the people of God. 
As we turn our thoughts today, if you will, towards our fathers and give thanks for what they've taught us directly or indirectly. Chapter 23 begins with the real beginning of the end of the life of a great warrior for God. His life had been a great source of encouragement, a great source of strength and vitality, faithfulness and courage. His tremendous example has given us opportunity to lead the people of God as a father figure for these many, many years. He served with them for 70 plus years by leading it as an example. He walked his talk and talked his walk. As a reflection of the life of this true faithful follower, one can say the main idea of the entire book of Joshua that uh, would be passed on as he was passing on the baton today would be this. Godly living is not accomplished by winning a, a single skirmish but by enlisting for lifelong service. If you will, since the swords had grown silent, now more than ever they needed a faithful, a diligent commitment to follow the Lord, His Word and His will and His ways more than ever. We should hear Joshua as he leads us this morning words that need to impact our lives through the hundreds of years that's gone by. Joshua stands, and as Jesus would enter the words, he says, you cannot serve two masters. Folks, we have to make a choice. There has to be a decision made. And today I implore you by the, by the man of God as we hear the word of God today, hear this word today. Fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters, hear the word of God and not just hear it, but heed the word of God. As we pass this baton to a new generation of leadership, as we pass this baton to those ready to, to embark on this tremendous journey that God wants to take us all on. Can I have an amen? amen. Chapter 23, if you got it, say, I got it. Uh, chapter 23 begins this morning, the last message, the last words, as we come down to an end of the life. And the Bible said it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and was stricken in age. After many, many years of faithful service to the Lord, after many, many years of watching and, and guiding and leading, uh, I got a text this week from Miss Teresa. I uh, used to be Singleton, Miss Teresa Jacobs, and Teresa was telling me that they placed Brother Billy in a hospice house in Mountain Home. And he's there for his last days. And he's there uh, to put him to rest uh, so that he would be easy and not be in any pain. And my heart goes out because he's one of the men that, that I grew up in this church watching and, 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 and trying to pattern my life after the, the godliness of, of his life. And, and now he's waiting. It's, it's just a matter of time, just a matter of days before he'll meet the Lord and, and he'll be with the Lord. And I know that's been his desire for, for a long, long time. Time, he said, Brother Kim, I just want to go be with the Lord. And so, so as I think about that, and I think about the men of this church, and I remember Billy telling me a story one time about him being the youngest uh, deacon in the church at one time, and now he's one of the oldest that, that we've had in, in his late 80s. And so today we implore you, as, as, as I take Joshua and we look at this man, we think about the last days of his life and the words that he had to say, how very vital and important. In this chapter, in chapter 23, Joshua calls for the leadership of Israel, for the people of Israel, to courage and certainty. He wants them to have courage as they continue on, just like they've had for the many years that they walked around for 40 years in the desert, for the many years that they, they waited and waited patiently to go through the, 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 the promised land and take the land that God said was theirs, for them to uh, now live in that land. God was encouraging them, and he wants them to take courage today and know that a certainty, if God be for us, who then can be against us? Amen. So remember that today. Joshua wants us to understand that he notes these things to his nation. He makes this out. The Lord has given rest to the people of God. He tells us there in verse number 1, he said they had given rest to Israel. Sometimes what happens is in times of peace and prosperity, in times, in the good time, people have a tendency to spiritually grow lax, complacent at ease, 
to re relax and just say, oh, everything's so good. We've got it so well. God's been so good to us. And folks, he has, but we have to be ready because the Bible says our adversary is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour because at any moment he can pounce on us as believers. Come on, say amen. You got to be ready. You got to be understanding. You got to understand. And he wants to have certainty. He wants to have courage that in these times of peace and prosperity, Dr. J. Bernie McGee, as I was studying this week, Dr. McGee made a point. He said, right after World War II, he said, God punished the nations of Russia and Korea and Germany and all those different nations that, he, that had gone through the war. And America suddenly went through some prosperity, wonderful, amazing things. And you know, during the war, uh, um, uh, during those very difficult times, America had prayed and sought God and was seeking the path of God and that God's blessings would be on him. But soon after that, prosperity hit America and, and everybody was happy and it was good and it was wonderful. But what he saw was, he said, what I saw in this time of peace, in this time of prosperity, is our spiritual lives went this away. Be careful. If things are going really well in your life, know that that adversary is ready to pounce on you at any moment. Isn't that right? Be ready. Be understanding that, that Satan is roaring like a lion, ready to devour you. Understand that. And the Bible says here that their enemies came to that place. They were round about Joshua and now an old man. Verse 2 says, And Joshua called for all of Israel, for all the leaders and for their heads and for their judges, and if you will, for their officers. And he said to them, I am old and stricken in age. Verse 3. And you have seen all that the Lord your God hath done to these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. He said, you've saw it. You've witnessed it. You've been a part of it. Many of those folks were the people that walked around for 40 years that did not die. They were that group. Many of those families were the people that watched as when the children of Israel, when the priests stepped out into the, to the Jordan River at high flood tide, and when they did, the water, the unseen hand of God held back the waters, and, and the waters walked away, and the children of Israel, over a couple of million of them, walked across into the promised land on dry ground. They saw the amazing things of God. They need to remember that it was God's hand that done all those things. Come on, say amen. Folks, I've seen so many wonderful and amazing things happen here in this church over the last 21 years. Over the last 21 years, we've watched God do, and as a teenage boy growing up, watching the Lord do amazing things right here in this place, in this community, using people just like you as God did that. And patriarchs that we loved and cared for and prayed for, people that thought we couldn't have ever be saved, guess what? They were saved. I'd prayed for 40 years for a man to be saved, and just this last year, he was walked the aisle and gave his heart to Jesus. Say amen. amen. God can. God's able. He said, listen, don't forget what you saw. Don't forget the things that you've watched and you've witnessed. And as he was sharing with those men, as he gathered those around together with him, he pulled those men together. I'm old. I, he called all the leadership. You have saw what God has done for you. Never forget it. I'm afraid sometimes we have short memories in churches, don't we? I'm afraid sometimes we have short memories because we think, oh, it's now, woe is me. Folks, God's still on the throne. and He said, I'll never leave you nor yet forsake you. Amen. God promises that. Don't forget that. Don't, don't relish in the fact that you are a child of the Almighty God. You have your own place in this world. Look at verse number 4. His recollection of those wonderful and amazing days of yesterday. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to inheritance for your tribes and from the Jordan, with all the nations I have cut off, even to the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he will expel them before you and drive them from out of your sight, and you will possess their land land as the Lord your God hath promised to you God has been faithful always will be faithful never hadn't been faithful God will Kyle and Cole and I were having lunch yesterday and as we were sitting down having lunch we got to talking about the children of Israel as we talked about the children of Israel many of the children of Israel if you remember during those 40 years they got out in the middle of the desert when the, Moses was leading them and their desire was to go back to Egypt y'all remember that they wanted to go back to Egypt because they said, we can eat leeks there. You've brought us out here to starve to death. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain to get the law of God and they come back and they said, Aaron, you're going to have to make us a God. We don't 
know who to follow. What's going on? We don't even know where Moses is at. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? They forgot God. Don't forget God. Don't forget him. Don't forget the bounty and the blessings of the Lord. Don't forget him. God brought them out after they'd wandered for 40 years in the desert, walking around in a circle. 40 years in a circle. They finally came through. Moses died. Joshua took over. His words to them was be strong, be courageous, don't fret, don't worry. I'll take care of you. I'll be with you. Folks, as a child of God, I have one promise that I hang on to day by day by day. I will never leave you nor yet forsake you. Come on, say amen. Even when I mess up terribly, even when I, I, I just tear it up and I, I'm not worth a dime for nothing to nobody, the Lord looks at me and he says, man, I still love you. I still care about you. And, and so we need to remember that God has been, always will be. He's faithful, y'all. He's faithful. Look, if you will, at verse number 6, we find in Joshua uh, it's chapter 23, verse 6, he said, Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside there from to the right hand nor to the left. As I said, Joshua 1, 7 and 8 says the exact same thing. Throughout the entire book, Joshua has tried to tell us, listen, be strong, be courageous. God's on, in control. He's going to take care of you. Do not give in. Do not give in to idolatry. Look at verse 7. That you come not among these nations. He wanted them to be separate. That these remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves to them. Now he calls them to be faithful. Listen to me. Here's what's happened. N N Joshua is looking in those people's eyes for some of the very last time. He's telling them what a father would tell them. My dad is still here, and I love my dad. I'm so grateful for him. And I, one of the most important things that my dad has taught me, taught me a lot about things, taught me a lot about life, but one of the most important things is he said, Son, you need a Savior. Can I have an amen? You need a Savior. He told me, he said, you need, you need Jesus. And I remember that as a 13-year-old boy. And, and soon after that, I walked the aisle and asked Christ to come into my heart. And, and he talked to me about following the Lord in baptism and being obedient to the Lord. But he, but he taught, that's what he told me. Joshua is telling the people of God, listen to me. Don't you go and have relations with the people that have come in. Remember, God told the, the people of, of, of Israel, he said, you go in and you wipe them out. You go in and annihilate them. You go in and don't make an alliance with them because when you do, you're going to be in trouble. Guys, we can't be friends with the world and still be friends with God too. Can't do it. Because when we do, guess what? The pull of the world is going to be much stronger to us than the pull of the Lord because we want to listen to the world because it makes our flesh feel good. It makes what we have, are sensual about. It makes us want to do what we want to do and not what God wants to do. We have to be very strong and very courageous. That's why over and over throughout this book, the Word of God says, be strong, be courageous. Don't give in. Don't intermarry. Don't intermingle. Don't become friends with the world. Don't become friends with the flesh. Don't become friends with the devil. Because when you do, guys, I fail every time. Don't you? I fail every time. And what happens, he's imploring them not to become idolaters. Because guess what? When a man, when, a, when, a, when a, a Jewish man would marry a pagan, if you will, uh, and what I mean by that is one of the people that was in Canaan already, the Amorite, the Perzite, the Hittite, the Shivite, all those ites, whatever they were, and they had not drove them out of their land. What happened was this. They still had paganism. They still had, would worship idols. They still worshiped things that did not, that weren't real. And guess what happened? Before long, that husband would turn over he would quit serving the true and living God and begin to follow after her God or his God vice versa because I want to tell you something you and I cannot be a part of and be a party to those things when culture says it's okay God does never say he's never changed his mind to say it's all right we've got to take a stand come on say amen 
When culture says that's what's going to happen, this is all right to do this, we'll change the law. Folks, God's law still has not changed forever. Say amen. Never has it changed. When morality, and that's the problem here, we're talking about morality versus military, and the morality will overcome. America's not going to fall. I don't believe America would fall because of our military strength or mind, because I believe we're one of the strongest nations in all the world. But what's going to happen is we're going to crumble from within because we're not strong enough and we're not listening to God long enough. Say amen. The people of God. Us. I'm not going to blame a lost man if America falls. It's not a lost man's fault. It's my fault as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's your fault as a Christian. It's our fault together because we have not allowed God first place in our life. We pushed him aside and we've intermingled with that other bunch. Come on, say amen. That's what we've done. That's what we've done. When I open up this word and I begin to look at this word and I read what this word, the Bible says, the Lord says, follow me. Follow me. Don't deviate to the left. Don't deviate to the right. He said, stay right, stay true, stay strong. One of the men that I text, he always says, preacher, I don't know how much longer the old world's going to be able to stand. I don't either. It's a scary thing. What's going to happen if we have an economic fall? What's going to happen if we have a cultural fall? What's going to happen through all these things? Where's people going to come to if another 9-11 happens? You know where they'll come to. They'll all of a sudden get real religious once again. Come on, say amen. Folks, let's, let's, be, let's be where God wants us to be now before any of that thing happens, right? Let's get on our face, face before God and begin to cry out to God and say, God, only you can change the hearts of men and women, boys and girls everywhere. You see, God gave them a place in the world. God ran ahead of them, getting the things out of the way. He fought for them. Who's fighting for you? Be courageous. Stay true. Stay straight. Stay on the path. Look at, look at what he says in verse number uh, 8. He says, but cleave. That means cling, if you will. Cleave to the, to, unto the Lord your God as you have done unto this day. While it's still right now, cleave to him. That's the same word in the, in the book of Genesis where the Bible says that a man should leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Same word. We need to cleave to the Lord. One of the stories I love in the, in the New Testament is where Jesus came. And, and remember the lepers that came? When the lepers, and he, they fell, but one leper out of ten came and fell before him and said, thank you. When, 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 when as Jesus had, had died and had gone away and come back, and they wanted to cleave to the Lord, they wanted to, to hang on to his legs, they wanted to, to grasp him. He said, don't touch me now. He said, I hadn't yet ascended to my father. Hang on, folks, we need to cleave to the Lord today because he's ready for us to cleave to him. Say amen. God needs that. He wants that. He longs for that for us as the people of God. Look what he says in verse number 9. Hold fast to God's word. Verse 9, he says, For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. They wasn't a bunch of mamby pambies. These were strong. They had been there for eons of time. He said, But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you in this day. One man, one man, the Bible says shall chase a thousand. Do you see that the power behind us is always greater than what we face before us? Come on, say amen. The power behind us is, folks, one man could chase a thousand because the power of God is behind him. We need to remember. We need to hold fast to the word of God. We need to lay hold of that. The Bible says, for it is God that fights for you as he has promised you. Let me ask a question. When the baton is being passed. If you heard Cliff's prayer, he said, one of the greatest things in my life is being a dad. And he said, but I didn't always get it right. Cliff is taking a baton, and he's passing it to Elijah. Just as I've taken a baton and passing it to April, Madeline, and Lindsay. Just as my dad passed it to my brother and myself. 
just as Jimmy passes it to his daughters, just as you will pass it on. And folks, when your children see you and they look at you, what are they getting a view of? What are they getting a view of tonight? Do they know you love Jesus? Have they had this baton? Does it mean something as you run in the race of life, as you're continuing to go forward? Is that baton, does it mean something? Is it something you've laid hold of and say you die for that? As a leader, as the pastor of this church, and as I pass this baton to Cole, as I pass it to Kyle, as I pass it to Josh, as I pass it to some young men that are growing up and want to be a part of the ministry, are we holding forth the word of life? Folks, we must be true, tried, and it's when we're tested that God is on the throne. Say amen. He is. We need to remember what God's done. We need to remember what God wants to do in our life. Do not give in to idolatry. Follow and or follow after strange God. Follow not the pagans that were before you there. They, they, they did not run out of town. They, they didn't leave. They, 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 they let them do what they wanted to do. And it cost them. The Bible says in verse number 11, Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that you love the Lord your God. What does the Bible say in the New Testament? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and love your neighbor as what? That's our job. That's what we're here for. And that's hard sometimes. It's hard to love our neighbors. It's hard to love people that are unlovable. It's hard to take on those things that, that you and I have. Love and obedience always hang on together. God's love and the obedient life that you and I are to live are to have to do that. Jesus said these words, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15, if you love me. My question is today, as God's question was here, do you love him? Oh, I do, Brother Ken then your obedience will show it, then my obedience will show it. Then we want to die to self, then we want to die to the things of the world. He goes on to tell us as he shares there in verse number 12, watch out, watch out, if you will, watch out for the warning from God. Verse 12 says, else, and I, I, I added this morning, or else, if you do in any wise go back and cleave to the remnant of those nations, even to them that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them, and go out into them, and they to you. Hear the word of God. Know for a certainty. Listen to me. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your side, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from all that is good land which the Lord your God has given. He said, you've made alliances with them. If you do that, you're in trouble. God help us. Then in the there to the here and the now. What did Joshua say thousands of years ago to those people? He said, if you make friends with the devil, if you make friends with the flesh, if you make friends with the world, it's going to come back and bite you. The Bible says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he what? Also reap. That's the word of God. That's what we're dealing with here in the Word of God. We need to watch out for God's warning. We need to heed the Word of God. We need to cleave to the God that loves us. We need to hang forth. Look what verse 14 says. He said, Behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth. He said, I'm going to die. The Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it's been appointed a man wants to die, and after this to judgment. Every one of us is going to stand before God one day. You'll either stand before Him as he's going to be your justifier and he's your, he's your savior, he's your Lord, or you'll stand before him and he'll be your judge. And you'll not have an answer why you should get into heaven because being a good boy or a good girl or because you came to church or because you was a member of this church or any other church is not going to get you into heaven. I'm going the way of the earth. And you know that in your hearts and in your souls that no one thing, that not one thing hath failed. But all the good things that the Lord your God spake concerning you and all has come to pass. And not one thing has failed. He said everything God said, guess what has happened? Everything that God said. Everything that God said. I still believe everything that God said will come to pass. How about you, amen? Everything. 
Joy, God's not going to make an excuse for you, and he's not going to make an excuse for me. Cecil, God's not going to make an excuse for you, and he's not going to make one for me. Larry, God's not going to make an excuse for you. JT, he's not going to make an excuse for you. Rudy, he's not going to make an excuse. He's not going to make an excuse for any of us. We need to heed and cleave to the word of God this morning and say amen. God help us. Here's the worst thing that could happen to you today. The worst thing. That one day, because you've made friends, one day because you've intermingled with the things of the world, one day because you've done these things, you lose your faith. I didn't say your salvation. I said your faith. There's a lot of people that sat on these pews right here in the last 21 years that I've been here, came in like gangbusters. I mean, they, were some, they wanted to be somebody for God. And they got mad at somebody else. And guess what? They've fallen by the wayside. Am I telling the truth, Cliff? I'm telling the truth this morning. Listen to me today. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't you keep your eyes on anybody else in this building. You keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. We'll let you down. We'll mess up. We'll do something wrong. You'll say, I can't believe they did that. It's because we've just nudged over. Any of y'all ever been tired in your spiritual life? Raise your hand if you have. Been tired spiritually? Man, I have. Man, I've been tired spiritually. Oh, Satan, he works me over. I mean, head and shoulders, toes and nose and the whole nine yards. He was, and guess what? I get tired. I get down. This book is talking to us about the apostasy that's going to happen. People who would once come in and they'll walk away from the Lord. People come in and they'd be all excited about God. And because of difficulties and heartache, and God, those things are going to come. But God sends us through those things to make us stronger, to make us better, not to make us bitter or to walk away from Him. brings us here to you say well Kim, I'm, I'm not much I'm not either when I read the next chapter of the book of, of judges when you read this it's a cycle they're going in circles all the time get things right with God man things are going good and all of a sudden it's just like three o'clock hits and we mess up and then they go by the way of the world for a while. And then they come back at 6 o'clock and all of a sudden something happens. And they come back again. They get right with the Lord. And they come back and they turn away from the Lord. You watch the children of Israel. That's what they've done for eons of years. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is doing today. And because it's not, it's not a military problem in America, it's a moral issue today. Come on, say amen. God help us. And we as the people of God will sit back and say, what are we going to do? I'm only one. You're one. And remember the Bible said here, one could fight a thousand. Isn't that right? One could fight. One, the power behind you is greater than the force in front of you. The power of God is greater. Listen to what, verse, what the last two verses of this book, of this chapter says in verse 15. Therefore, it shall come to pass that all good things that come upon you, which the Lord your God promised, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, until he hath destroyed you from off the good of the land which the Lord your God hath given to you. Consequences. You see, the greatest danger for Israel, the greatest danger if the world unfolded to them would be for them to turn away from God and turn to pagan idols and worship idols. Guys, we in America worship a lot of things worship worse than they did back in those days. We worship a lot of things. And God said the consequences for these things, this is what's going to happen. Of all the good things, I'm going to take them all away from you. Verse 16. When you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and you'll perish quickly from off the good land which has been given to you. As I said, one of the hardest things and the most difficult lesson that I've had as a pastor is for people to walk away from the faith. There's people that were once right here, right here, close, 
have turned around and walked away from God because of work, because of sports, because of relationships. Could we just go on and name them all? Isn't that right? Amen? Huh? All of those things. There's an old song we sing in the hymnal, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. See, most of the time, when people are mad, when people are upset, their eyes are not on Jesus. There was a story of a pastor who had gotten to an argument with one of his men in the church. And, it was the, 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 and, and the pastor really didn't even know what was going on, but he quit coming to church. And he went to visit him, and as the man sat there that day in his house, his wife opened the door and let the pastor in. And they sat there together, and there was a big fireplace there. And as the fireplace was glowing, they sat there in silence with each other. Nobody said a word. The preacher went over and got the tongs and took an ember, a glowing ember out of the fireplace and set it up on the, the hearth. And as he set it up on the hearth, it was glowing and red. And as time passed, it got quiet. It got cool. The pastor went over and picked it up and threw it back in the fire. And the man sitting in his chair says, I'll see you Sunday. You can't do this on your own. You can't be what you need to be by yourself. You need Jesus and you need the body of Christ to love on you and for us to help each other out. Because, folks, I'm going to tell you something. When that old line, when that roar gets to roaring, it scares you. Where are you going to turn to? You need to turn to the Lord. You need to keep your eyes on Him. You need to grow your faith instead of letting go of your faith. You need your life to count for God. As a wise father, Joshua gathered those people together. And he says, hear me. Listen to what I have to say. I want you to get this. He asked them, he asked those people to look back at God's works. Remember the things that God had done for you. He looked around and he says, hold fast to the word of God. You know what the Bible says. Then he said, watch out. Watch out. The enemy keeps strong. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? The baton is being passed.